everyone. Welcome back to our channel, RV East Coast. Um, today we want to tell you about some of our worst moments during our first year of camping. Uh, we have a couple disclaimers for you before we get started. This video is for beginner RVers, for newbies like us. We are professional newbies. The only thing that we want to emphasize here is that we are not trying to scare you with this video. We just want to share our experiences so you don't have to go through the same. We actually don't regret at all getting our trailer. We had some of the best highlight of the year because um, we were traveling together as a family. So now we can get started. Okay, so number one, flash floods. So um, we went to Gettysburg and it was along a river. We got a river front site. It was perfect. It was great because we had a lot of space. The dog was able to run around, um, but we didn't pay attention to the weather. That night we had rain nonstop, and in the morning when we got up, uh, the water was coming pretty close to our site, and it just got crazy in a matter of minutes. I never thought that when they say flash floods, it is literally, it happens just like that. In a matter of minutes, the water was in our side. We were literally walking in water and we had to hitch up and rush out of there. So it was a little bit scary. And it was not fun because we were literally throwing things into the truck. We had the kids throw their shoes on. I had to sludge through the water just to get them buckled in their car seats. Um, it was, you know, and then we had to spend hours trying to dry everything out, trying to take everything to the laundry because everything just got soaked. It was, it was not fun at all. Yeah, so that's a, the main thing we learned during that trip was to pay attention to the weather alerts in our area. Another thing that we learned during this experience is not to over romanticize the waterfront site. You know, when you buy a trailer, you see these brochures, they show this trailer parked in, next to a beautiful lake or by the beach and everything. Um, of course, when you go to the campground, that's exactly what you want to do. And you want the waterfront site. But this time it didn't work <laughs> very good for us. Don't get us wrong, we really like our waterfront sites, but sometimes it's just not worth it. What is the next one? Number two, overwhelmed by bugs. So we went to one site in New Jersey and the mosquitoes happened to be so incredibly bad there. We had no idea. We walked out of our site and you couldn't even be outside for two minutes and you had at least 10 bites on you. We didn't have super strong bug repellent. Um, and then later in that same area, we went to um, a, wildlife preserve. a wildlife preserve and the green eyed flies that bite were so bad that you could not roll down your window. In fact, you rolled down your window to take a picture, of course, and we had like four of them in the car and everybody was screaming. So check when you're going somewhere, if there's any kind of bugs and make sure that you have strong, strong, strong bug repellent for when you need it. Yeah, so what we learned on this trip was to do your research and check online and ask, call the campground, ask friends, what is the best time to visit the site that you want to visit? In this case, it was a swampy area and it was just horrible. And we did enjoy our time there, but we, we wish we went there like very early in the spring or maybe later in the fall. We actually went back later, my son and I went back later in the fall and it was totally fine. No mosquitoes, no problems. So that was problem number two. Number three, picking the wrong site. So one of the trips this year, um, we had a wonderful time. It was a wonderful uh, long weekend, but the last night it was raining all night. And when we got up next morning, our site was covered by water. And you know, it was our last day, so it wasn't a big deal, but we we didn't do anything that day because it was just not fun being there, so we had to hitch up and get out. So what we learned during this trip was that we need to be more cognizant of the site that we choose. So keeping an eye out for like the wet sites and puddles and the electric 
boxes, making sure that they're in good shape. Um, just kind of doing a once over before we pick a site. I know sometimes I get annoyed because we get there and the kids are anxious and I just want to get a site and get unpacked. But my husband is really good at kind of taking his time, doing a once over of the site, making sure that he looks for all those things. Um, so that we can actually enjoy our trip. Yeah, you always have to look for those trouble signs before you unhitch. Moving on. Number four, rainy days with kids, but more specifically with toddlers. As you can tell, rain was... The theme of our <laughs> summer. And that's exactly what we want to talk about uh, with you. We travel with kids. We travel with two very, very, very very active kids and being stuck inside a trailer with uh, two active kids it can be quite overwhelming so what we have is we try to keep rainy day toys that are toys only we play with when it's raining um, so hopefully the kids are excited about them and getting them out um, we also have a good collection that we have of movies yeah, we, all, we, we always try to have a few like newer movies that they haven't seen or that they haven't seen as many times. So um, in case of a rainy day, we can have a movie day or movie night inside the trailer and keep them somehow entertained. Number five is flat tires. Yeah, so in this one, um, it's more about being prepared for when you have a flat tire. We only had a flat tire once this year but we had two screws on the same tire at the same time. Fortunately, we were prepared to take care of the problem on the spot. We had the right tools. I have um, this uh, little tire repair kit. I'm gonna put a link here in the description below, but it looks like this. And yeah, with this, you can repair the tire right away. I just took it off, took the two screws out, um, put the little patch in and I didn't even have to use our yeah. uh, spare tire. So yeah. And you did it in the parking lot of the grocery store while yeah. the kids and I grocery shop. Yeah, it was it was very easy. So it could have been a frustrating experience, but a good thing to have in your trailer, a little tire um, repair kit and a good air pump. Uh, remember that the air pressure in your tires in your trailer is usually a little higher than the, the tires on your truck. So you're gonna need a good pump. One more thing that people don't think about too often is that the wrench that you use to remove the nut locks on your- Lug nuts. Uh, the, your, how do you say it? Lug nuts. That. Um, the one that comes with your truck probably will not work with the- um, What's that word again? Lug nuts. In your trailer. So get one, get the right tool to remove the, the nuts in the trailer too, and you'll be okay. Number six is a warm refrigerator. So I know something that we've um, had to encounter a few times is that we don't like buying everything when we get to a campsite because it's a waste of money. And then when we bring it home, we end up having five jars of mayonnaise and three bottles of ketchup. Um, so we try to take with us some of the things that we already have at home, like condiments, our milk, our eggs, things that, that we would like to use during the weekend and that they don't go to waste. However, something that we learn after we got the trailer is that the refrigerator in the RV is not like a residential fridge, so it takes way longer to get cold. So we've compensated for this by having a good cooler, and having a lot of um, ice packs that we use on a regular basis. So our ice packs came from our Blue Apron meals that we order. Plugs yeah, for Blue Apron. they are pretty big and, and, and uh, if you lay them flat on the freezer, um, then they take pretty much no room in our cooler. So yeah, we can keep them in there for a few days and yeah, the cooler remains uh, cold. Yeah. And even if the refrigerator in the trailer is still not too cold, we put those giant ice packs inside, inside. the the refrigerator in the in the trailer, and that helps. Something else that um, we do often is that if we are gonna travel on a Friday, I try to go to the lot when we keep our trailer on Thursday night, 
and try to start the refrigerator the day before. That way it's going to be cool from the very beginning of the trip. And if your RV is parked at your house, I guess you won't have that problem, but ours is not, so. We don't have that luxury. Yeah. Number seven is rushing out of the campground on your last day. Yeah, so back when we started camping, we used to not enjoy our last day at the campground because you know it's morning and you get like a little fixated on being out of there by 11 a.m. And later on we realized that it doesn't have to be that way. Very little people are gonna be checking in uh, into the park on Monday or, or even on that um, afternoon. So we discovered that you can call the park and ask them for a late checkout. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a few extra hours so you can enjoy the day, go to the pool, have a nice breakfast, even a lunch, uh, enjoy uh, your last day, and you don't have to rush out. Some of our um, kind of best times were when we just booked the campground to Monday and then waited until that evening to kind of pack up and head out. Yeah, especially if you have a Thousand Trails membership, uh, it's free. It's not going to cost you anything extra to book one extra day. So even knowing that we are checking out on a Sunday, we book it until Monday. That way we can take our time to get out of there. We can even leave in the evening if we want and we can enjoy, uh, especially the pool. Pools in the campground are really nice and quiet on Sunday afternoons because everybody's gone. And number eight, our last one, is not checking the activity sheets ahead of time. Now, sometimes we um, avoided some of the activities because we have an eight-year-old and we have a three-year-old. And sometimes with our three-year-old, it's not as easy to do the craft activities and some of the stuff. And also, sometimes I can be a little antisocial. Um, she so said it. I so I'm not always into super into the activities, but I think we found out that we missed out on quite a few things that would have been a lot of fun. Um, and I think we realized that there's so many things that the kids can do on the campsite without us having to leave and find things to do that they can really enjoy the site and we can enjoy it too. And sometimes the, the campground has a good information in their activity sheet that, that we didn't know about. For instance, uh, we used to be a little uh, afraid of taking a water and electric only sites. We always try to get hookups. And one thing we learned one day reading the activity sheet and information sheet is that that campground offer a hunting wagon service and they come and pump your gray and black tank at no cost. Um, so we later on visited that same campground and we were just not concerned about it. And that allowed us to actually get a waterfront site because those were only water and electric. So yeah, read your information sheet because um, sometimes they have really good information. Another thing that we uh, learned in another campground is that if you book two weekends in a row, then they let you leave your trailer there connected with all the services for free during the week. So yeah, read your activity and information sheet and just take a look. It's going to take you a minute or two and you won't regret it. So there you go. I think that's our tips and our uh, experiences that we took away this year. So that's going to do it for today. Um, this is a very special video for us. We are hoping to hit 100 subscribers. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> we know it's, a, it's, it's not a big number, but it's a big milestone for us. Uh, it's our new channel. So if you like this video, please subscribe and give and us like a us like and comment. You're free. If it's it's nice. cost you much. So we'll see you in the next one. My name is Eli. And I'm Fawn. And this is RPE's Coast.